Okay, we're going to work on experiment nine today. This is fields and equipotentials. So we're essentially going to look at how um, electric fields and the change of potential are related. We're gonna do this for two different um, geometries. We're gonna do it for a parallel plate and we're gonna do it for our dipole. All right, so we understand that the electric field is the amount of force that we will place on a particular charge. So it's measured in Newton's force per Coulomb. And for a parallel plate, the electric field is fairly constant in points in one direction, essentially. For a dipole, it's a little bit different, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But remember, for the electric field, the electric field always points toward negative charges. Okay, so field lines will terminate a negative charge, and they always originate from positive charges, so the electric field will point away from a positive charge. The electric field tells us the direction that a positive test charge will feel a force. They are attracted to a negative charge, so the field lines point toward the negative charge, where the particle would be pulled toward, and again, positive charges repel other positive charges, so a positive test charge would be pushed away from another positive charge. Now the electric field for a point charge is simply the electrostatic constant K times Q divided by R squared. It's a little more complicated when we're talking about um, instead of point objects, line charges, area charges, or even volume charges. But um, we are going to relate this to our electric potential. And at first, this may not seem like they're all that related because electric potential is the potential energy a particle will have per unit charge. But really, if we look at electric field lines, electric field lines always point in the direction that the potential difference is changing or the electric potential is changing, okay? So in many respects, when we look at the electric field, the electric field points in the direction that the potential, the electric potential goes downward because just like in a gravitational field, uh, the gravitational force, the weight points toward the direction that the potential energy will decrease. When something's falling, it's falling from a greater height to a lower height. The height is decreasing, the potential energy is decreasing. Well, the gravitational field lines point in that direction. So for electric field, we can think about it the same way, that um, the higher the potential, okay, the more energy it has as that potential energy is converted into work, it's converted to kinetic energy, um, it moves from the positive voltage to the negative voltage. So um, again, we're looking at electric field and we're looking at potential, but we're going to, rather than really look at the numerical value, the quantitative value, we're going to be more interested in the direction, okay? Um, when we talk about equal potential surfaces, we're talking about places around charged particles or charged objects where the potential energy is all the same for a given charge, okay? So for instance, if our electric potential is 10 volts, and we draw a line around an object where all that region is at 10 volts, a particle placed at that 10 volts, anywhere on that line will have the same potential energy regardless. If we look at a positive charge, here's our uh, point charge right here at the center, Again, the electric field lines are pointing away from the positive charge. Now notice that the equipotential lines, the lines that represent the same potential energy, are all perpendicular to the electric field lines. No matter where you go, you draw a 90 degree angle between the field lines and the equipotential lines. Now this happens because for a point charge, we get the same Equipotential potential at the same distance of radius, okay? So basically when we do that equation, we say that the electric potential is equal to K, Q over R, R 
represents a constant radius. So therefore, we also have a constant voltage. Uh, let's look at some other things. Here's a dipole. And again, we can see the potential field, I'm sorry, the electric field pointing from the positive charge to the negative charge, okay? Again, we can figure out where the uh, potential lines are going to be uh, based on traveling in a perpendicular direction to the field lines. So again, here's a field line right here. Here is an equipotential line. Although I didn't draw it very well, you can clearly see that they're perpendicular to one another. Again, perpendicular, perpendicular. No matter where you choose, you always find that they're perpendicular. This is very important because later on, you're going to map out these green lines, okay? And then you're going to interpolate, you're going to draw in the field lines based on the potential lines. All right. Let's take a look at uh, parallel plates. Uh, parallel plates um, are always nice to study when we're talking about electric fields because electric fields are pretty much constant in direction and constant in magnitude between the two parallel plates. You will be mapping a parallel plate first, and then you're going to go back and map out. Oops, or too far back, map out the dipole. Um, again, this is sort of what we're going to expect. Uh, so keep that in your mind uh, as you're drawing these things out. Okay. What is the experimental procedure here? Well, basically, you're going to build an electric field mapping setup with a power supply, a galvometer, which is going to um, look at the direction that the current is flowing. You're going to use conducting uh, paper, which has a parallel plate drawn on it or a dipole drawn on it, and then uh, connect electrical terminals to this. Uh, we're also going to use a graph paper to represent the location of different lines, and this is going to be effectively your data. So it says place conducting paper on the board in such a way that the electrodes, the size of the board, make contact with the electric dipole or plates, the plates are what we're going to start with, on the conducting paper. Connect the electrodes to the battery terminals. We're going to use an electric power supply, but essentially it's going to be the same thing as the battery. Connect the galvometer to the stationary and movable probes. And this is what your paper is going to look like. Again, what we've done here is we've actually drawn um, or the company who gives us these things has uh, uh, put this metallic paint on this, and that's going to conduct electricity. Whereas anywhere you see the black here, this is all essentially, um, I think it's insulating, okay? Or it has a fairly high resistance. So in any case, you're going to connect the um, electric probes on both ends. Okay, you're going to connect uh, wires to both ends. And then one side's going to be positive, one side's going to be negative, and the electric field is going to go from positive to negative. Now, we can't experimentally detect the electric field directly, but we are going to map out the equipotential lines between the two using a galvanometer. All right. So here's what our setup looks like. Here's our power supply. That's going to provide the potential difference. And one side's going to be positive, one side's going to be negative. So the red wire is connected to the positive side. The green wire is connected to the negative side. And that's going to create our potential difference. Now, in order to find equipotential lines, we're going to use this probe called a galvanometer. If two points are on the same active potential, or the same electric potential, no current will flow through the galvanometer and the needle will basically just be vertical. If there's any potential difference, that'll force electricity through the galvanometer and we'll know that those two points are not at potential, not at the same voltage. 
So we're going to use one movable probe and one stationary probe to sort of map out where each of these points are. Okay. Once we know where these equipotential lines are, let's say I put my stationary probe right here in my movable probe, I map out these X's where I get the same voltage, I eventually can draw my equipotential line. Okay. Now, again, it says set the stationary probe, making contact to a point somewhere on the conducting paper. So again, let's say, start the stationary probe right there. Then move the movable point around the surface of conducting until you find a point where the needle of the galvanometer shows no deflection. The point where the movable and stationary points are touching in the conducting paper are at the same potential. Note that on your graph paper. So again, as we're doing this, oops, went too far. As we're doing this, you're making an X on your graph paper wherever we notice that we get the same potential. And notice we've got a scale on this side of the graph paper that matches the conducting plate and the scale on this part of the graph paper. So that helps you mark out where these are. Okay, so this right here is um, something that somebody's done already. The stationary probe was right here, and you can see an X everywhere we obtain the same potential. Okay? This green line represents the potential line. Okay? So that is for one location. I'll map out that line. Then I'll move the probe to a new location and map out that line. In a new location, map out that line until you have enough lines that you have a fairly good idea of where the potential lines are. Now, this is what the final product will look like after all the potential lines are in there. Notice that the green lines are fairly parallel to one another. They wrap around the sides a little bit where the field lines are bending, okay? But for the most part, Okay, you've got a nice electric field between the two. Once you have enough electric poten equal potential lines, we can then put in the electric field lines pointing from the positive plate to the negative plate. Okay, notice those red lines have arrows and they're all perpendicular to the green lines. Where it curves, I've got to curve my line. So out here, this would be an equipotential line for that. I'm sorry, a field line for that. But again, field lines point from positive to negative. All right. So when doing this lab, you might actually uh, do well to use colored uh, pens or, or colored pencils uh, when you're mapping this out, but that's the, what the final product should look like when we're done. Now you're going to do the same for the dipole. With a dipole, one side will be positive, one side will be negative. And when we map this out, you're going to do it on graph paper once again. And the final graph paper should look something like this. Again, if you look at the equipotential lines, these are the equipotential lines that have been mapped out. Okay, and then you're going to draw in the field lines. Okay, and of course that looks like the classic dipole. Now, finally, it says, did the electric field lines, I like how this goes one in one, did the electric field lines have the shape that you expected? Um, I hope so. If you look back here, this is what I would expect for a dipole. Okay. The lab actually calls both the, what I call the dipole and the parallel plate dipoles, because technically they are dipoles. But again, 
if you get this result, this is what I expect for the parallel plates. This is what I expect for the dipole. Compare the electric field potential to gravitational field potential. Okay, so that again is talking about um, when you're looking at uh, uh, the gravitational field on the Earth. You know, compare the direction. Uh, again, electric field potential uh, is always higher near a positive charge. Is always lower near a negative charge. Gravitational field is always greater at greater height, less at lower height. Um, the field always decreases from positive to negative. Gravitational field potential would decrease from higher height to lower height, okay? Let me pause the video and then we'll look at the actual experimental setup. Okay, now we're looking at the actual setup. We have the power supply right here. And I have to turn down a fairly low voltage. I don't want too much current going through my conductive paper. Uh, again, we've got the positive lead right here. We've got the negative lead right here shown in green. And what I'm going to do is place my stationary probe at some location. Yeah, and I've got to be a little careful here because the wires are a little bit old. I want to make sure that I've got a secure connection with everything. And I'm going to do my first measurement, maybe at this point right here, this nine five on my graph paper. And I look at um, my graph paper right here. I'm going to match it up with what's on my conducting board, okay? And uh, if I had a marker, I'd actually uh, mark that particular position for my point, but I don't have a marker with me, so I'll just have to uh, improvise a little bit. So there's my stationary one. Here's my galvanometer, which you can't really see the needle very well. But um, hopefully we can see a little bit of a deflection. You can see the galvanometer needle moves a little bit as I move back and forth. All right. So we want to find other points where it doesn't move, like right here. That's a zero. So I'd mark that off. And here's another point where I see zero deflection. And again, um, on my sheet of paper, <laughs> I'm going to use a big marker here. I've got my stationary probe at five comma nine. So five comma nine. That's my stationary probe right there. Okay, and I have equal potential at the next point, at the next point, so on and so forth. Now you'll notice as I start wrapping around. Okay, for instance, this point right here actually had the same potential. And that makes sense because as I look at this, this equal potential is gonna sort of wrap around this whole thing like this, okay? Um, so that would be one of my lines. And then to get my next line, I would move this permanent one further down, maybe in this row right here of eight, and map it out the same way, okay? Um, you know, unfortunately, you can't see uh, the graph paper that well. Um, if I hold it up, maybe you can see it a little bit better. And you can see the X's that I've made. Again, I would continue all the way over here till I had a nice um, echo potential line. And I do that several times until the whole thing was mapped out, okay? So again, here's your power supply. This acts as your voltage source. This could have been a battery. We just use power supplies because it means that we're not going through batteries as much. Here's your positive terminal, your negative terminal, okay? So try to write that out on, on the paper when you do this. And uh, again, the galvanometer, it's very simple. If the galvanometer needle is zero, that means the current is not flowing one way or the other. Again, um, 
when I'm pretty much in the same line, I get the same result. What you've done with this, I'm going to replace it with this paper right here. Okay. Simply slide out this paper and put in the other paper and map out the dipole there. All right. 